That's our alternative. That's the one that we need to go to. That's the one I'm going to feel confident about. Now, the great thing about decisions, ladies and gentlemen, is that there are really a lot of different types of decisions. If you flip over in the back of your uh, pamphlet, let's talk about some of them. One of the very first ones that hopefully, ladies and gentlemen, you never have to make is what we call as an irreversible decision. It is a decision that unfortunately when you make it, it can't be undone, it can't be unmade, nothing can be happened. And I'm here to tell you, you don't want to make that type of decision. I've had to make that decision. Can you look right now and sit there and when you make that decision of fire, can I really go back once everybody pulls their triggers and all those bullets go down the barrel? I go, whoa, stop! Stop right there! Get back in the barrel! They're gone. There's nothing that can be done. They're going down range and they're going wherever that they were actually aimed at. There's nothing that you can do. And I hope that you never get to that point where you have to make an irreversible decision where you sit there and go, yes, turn it on, do this, and it's totally irreversible. You need to really use critical thinking when you come up against those decisions. Okay? And they're out there. The next one is simply irreversible. We can change it. You make a decision and you can change it. Let me ask you something. What do you think is the worst decision that you can make? Here, I'll break it down real simple to you. You know, there's three different types of decisions you can make. You ready? There's a right decision, there's a wrong decision, and there's no decision. What do you think is the worst decision? Why? Why is no decision so bad? Anybody over here? Well, here, let's take the bad decision. So you make a bad decision, and you start to see it starts going south, it starts going bad. What can you do? You can change it, you can make another decision and make it what? Better. But when you make that cardinal rule of sin of sitting back and, ah, manana, you know, I won't worry about that problem. I won't worry about that employer that consistently is late. I won't worry that he's coming to work drunk all the time. I'm not going to worry about that. And guess what happens? It is the inevitable snowball beginning at the top of the hill and rolling down and getting bigger and bigger as it's coming down. And you're going to find that either one or two things are going to happen. You're going to get slammed in the face with a really hard decision that you could have made earlier on to save yourself a lot of heartache and a lot of problems, okay? Or else you're going to continue, and again, too, is, you know, the, the consequences and the implications are going to be horrific. Not making a decision is very easy to do, but the consequences and implications a lot of times can be light bulb, okay? Here, let's put it this way. Uh, you're in your automobiles, and you hear it clicking inside your motor. You're going to ignore it. What happens? You did ignore it. And it's the timing belt. Anybody ever have a timing belt break in a vehicle before? Oh, it does all sorts of nasty things. All oh, that little belt goes all over the place, and you're costing yourself anywhere between, I don't know, maybe $4,000 to $6,000 of money on something that you could have gone and replaced out. So you see here again, too, is you never want to sit there and not make a decision until something happens. Okay? All right, another one. You can make them in stages. Hey, let's go get married, okay? Uh, let's go get married. We'll talk about this. We'll wait a couple of months. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll go. We'll get some counseling. At the same time, we'll meet our parents. We'll do this. So I can make it in stages, correct? Uh, we're going to go in full production with this part. But before we do that, uh, let's go use an experimentation group or a control group. Let's see how they like it first. And then uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and instead of mass producing it, we'll, we'll go to this one city and we'll try and sample it there. See, I can make it in stages. I don't have to go full blown and say, hey, let's let it, let it roll. Let's go ahead and go out with the mass production of this part. Or better yet, ah, I'm going to quit college. What the heck? I don't need it anymore. Uh, maybe this semester I'm only going to take maybe two classes instead of four classes because it was too much for me. I'm working part time. So I can kind of make it in stages and find out that I'm a little bit more comfortable with it instead of making a whole decision and saying, I don't want to do this anymore. Which all too many times we do, don't we? Yeah. Unfortunately, with decision making, there are barriers to decisions. And if you look down the bottom, let's talk about some of them, okay? What is simply the perfect solution? Hey, I need more information. Give me more. No, it's not enough. I need more. I need more experience. Give me this. You're always looking for the perfect solution. Look, guys, anybody hear of what's called a 70% rule? If you have 70% of the information, 
You take a look at all the alternatives, and you have at least 70% your mind saying, you know, I, I know at this point right here it's good. You should be able to make a decision based off of that. If you're sitting here waiting for the last iota minute, for the last piece of information to come in, again, you're simply trying to look for the very perfect solution. We're in a world that's imperfect, guys. You're not going to find that very perfect decision. The next one is what we call as indecisions. Okay? Avoiding the, the decision that we don't want to make. Okay? Oh, gosh, I need to go sign up for that class. You know, you're avoiding it at all costs. You don't want to make it. And then, of course, you have what's called a